And we want to wish our moms a very, very happy Mother's Day today. And uh, may the Lord bless you for grandmothers, for mothers and mothers-to-be. And uh, Jocelyn has got something for you, and I think she'll give that out at the end. And uh, so we uh, bless you for coming this morning. Uh, we have a special guest who's no stranger to us, and that's uh, Brenda Bosch, Dr. Brenda Bosch. Okay? And uh, she has a doctorate, and we rejoice in that as well. And uh, Brenda is one of our partners, and uh, also who Rock of Christ uh, supports as well in prayer and financially as well for many, many years. And uh, it's a privilege to do that. And we can't always go everywhere uh, where some of the missionaries go. And Brenda, indeed, has traveled in many, many different places. And she's staying with us, and she really just likes to rough it and has been in uh, all sorts of places as well. Uh, and we've known Brenda even before we came here from the house of the Lord. And so it's been great. We've got a great friendship with her as well. And uh, so I think partly she has come to say thank you to us as well, and because she said to us a little while ago she wants to say thank you to Rock of Christ uh, as well. But uh, Brenda, you can tell us some more, uh, a little bit of what you do, or whatever the God has laid on your heart this morning. Uh, so we want to welcome you up uh, today, uh, this morning, just to come and minister the word. Thank you. Good morning. I'm so happy to see each of you here. I'm very, very happy to be here. I've been threatening to come, and then it became COVID, and then this, and then that. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you so much to John and Jocelyn and family for their hospitality. Thank you so much for your support. And I want to include here those that are listening to the, the sound the, the, the soundtrack afterwards, the recording, those who are working in shifts, etc., that can't be here. It is because of you here and those who are working shifts that I can still be involved in missions. I'm extremely, extremely Since COVID started, I haven't traveled, but you haven't seen me for some years now. So let me just backtrack a little bit. Uh, I went to Australia once a year and taught for a week at the School of Youth with a Mission um, on the topic of cross-cultural relationships, how to uh, get along with other cultures uh, and what the differences are. And that was normally just before they went on outreach. And many would say on the field, Oh, Brenda told us this. She said that's going to happen, you know. So that was one, one thing that continued for 16 years. Um, and then the other thing I was involved in on the field was to train people in church planting. That was especially in the Philippines, being sent from island to island. That unfortunately has stopped now uh, due to an unfortunate thing that happened with the bishop that always sent me, and I'm no longer to, you know, able to return there because of a split in the church, uh, in the, the whole denomination that took place, which is very, very sad. Uh, then I'm still teaching at the Bible school in Barberton, where they have 76 students this year. They normally have 100 students, but also due to COVID and other things like visas, um, and I'm so happy I can give the Lord the glory for this, but they told me this year, you're the only lecturer who gets a standing ovation from all the students uh, at the end of three weeks. No other lecturer gets this honor, and I want to give the honor to the Lord because it's he who gives us gifts, it's he who gives us health and um, the ability to do that job, but it's one of my favorite places to go because I know that those students come from up to 33 nations um, and they will take the seed right across Africa and you are part of that. Uh, then there are 
other things here at home that I'm involved in, where from within my lounge or even my bed, I am doing a lot of other work. For instance, teaching online. Uh, soon I will be teaching within the next two weeks in the Philippines. Uh, the end of this week, I will teach a group of Wycliffe Bible translators. Um, I will also be... I'm serving on a board of a mission agency. Uh, this is better. This is much better. Okay. So radio work also with Transworld Radio. I'm, I'm doing work there. And then I've been writing books. Uh, my first three books were on missionary care provision because that's my speciality area. Uh, some people don't even realize that missionaries need care, but they are just young children that join the mission force. And you as a parent sit here at home and worry yourself sick about your child there in Mongolia or wherever. Um, but uh, we... You know, I'm, I was training and I'm still training people in topics to do with missionary care. How to look after other missionaries and how to look after yourself on the field. Uh, how to prevent calamity with yourself. Preventing things like burnout, loneliness, culture shock, etc. Um, and those three books have gone out to many, many countries, as many as 52 countries. Uh, and during lockdown, I was asked to write uh, two manuals on how to train missionaries. So I said, okay, then it will be two, not just one. One on discipleship, because if I'm not a disciple, how can I disciple somebody else? And then the other book is on how to prepare for the field. And those you can see on my website, if you wish. Uh, that's www.thrivingmember. The member is the member of the mission agency, not the member of the church. Thrivingmember.com. Um, and now I want to ask you if you are listening to the soundtrack of this uh, morning and this message, uh, please ask Pastor John at the point of where we will cut things. Call. A cut, cut for us. Um, I am my message to you. I'm going to put this thing back here so that I can see my message, and hope hope it won't interfere. It sounds good. Um, so uh, the PowerPoint is lessons from the life of Martha. Now today is Mother's Day, but I'm not only preaching to the ladies, I'm also speaking to the men. Your name may not be Martha, but what can we think of? Manny. Maybe your, your name is Manny. Not Manny, Manny. <laughs> um, but I'm not only speaking to the ladies, but I am specially speaking to the ladies today. Uh, lessons from the life of Martha. When we hear the name Martha, you also think of who else? Mary, yes. And then when we compare these two, we are often discouraged because we see ourselves as Martha, most of us, isn't it? Or do you see yourself as a Mary? I'll, I'll, um, I'll tell you where this message comes from. But let's first read John 11. John 11, verse 17 to 29. This looks like none of the electronics want to work today. Ah, there you are. Okay, John 11, verse 17. John 11, verse 17 to 29. 
I'm reading to you from the Living Bible, so it will be different if you have another proper translation. Uh, John 11 verse 17. When they arrived at Bethany, they were told that Lazarus had already been in his tomb for four days. Bethany was only a couple of miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish leaders had come to pay their respects and to console Martha and Mary on their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Sir, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. And even now, it's not too late, for I know that God will bring my brother back to life again if you will only ask him to. Jesus told her, Your brother will come back to life again. Verse 24, Yes, Martha said, when everyone else does on resurrection day. Jesus told her, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, shall live again. He is given eternal life for believing in me and shall never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? Verse 27, yes, Master, she told him, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one we have so long awaited up to there. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you will bless your word to our hearts. You promise that your word will never go forth and return empty. It will accomplish all that you had planned. And I pray, Lord, even if there's just one of the seven things that I will be sharing, why Martha was so important to you, that that will stick to our hearts and bear fruit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let me look then. There is another verse there, and we all know this, this portion. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken. This is the reason why we often elevate Mary far above who we are. And I am not here condoning Martha, the fact that she was not sitting at Jesus' feet enough. I'm not saying that. That is still, these are Jesus' words. He says, one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part. But, Sometimes we can be so much Martha that I have no confidence before God. I so much am comparing myself with Mary because I have washing to do, I have dishes to do, I have food to cook, I have things to go and buy for the family, I have clothing to fix, plus, 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 plus my job, plus the garden, you all know what I'm talking about. And sometimes I personally feel I'm drowning. I need an assistant. Please help me, you know. And then sometimes our relationship with God truly suffers because we're thinking of all these things that still needs to get done. Isn't it true, mothers? Um, but Jesus said, one thing um, is needed. He said, I must come closer when it's not working. Can you move it on there, Carl? Can you move it? Yes. One thing is necessary. Next slide, please. This message comes from uh, when I was in India. Next slide. Uh, I was on this roof there where the circle is. Now you can see the roofs in India are flat. 
and that is often what we read in the Old Testament. So the Indian, many of the Indian houses are like this. Early in the morning, I would get up in uh, Deva and Prashanti's home, and then I will sweep around the house all the leaves, and I will put on the taps, which has to go into a big pit or a well where the, where the water goes into because there's only water coming in for one hour. Don't moan so much, only one hour in India in that, in that area. But then we make most of what we can do. I open the tap to the well and I open another tap to quickly do all the plants around the house. They, very, they love plants. Uh, and then sometimes I sweep the, the roof. And while, while I was sweeping the roof, this conversation was going on in my head. Next slide. Uh, that's the, that's the, the, the view from, from the roof. Next slide. So when I was there in that circle, I had this conversation with God. I said, Lord, I'm such a Martha. I just can't be Mary. I, I, I see so many things that need to get done. And I want to help this family, but I still want to do the work that I've come to do here in India, etc., etc. Will I ever get it right? Next slide. Uh, then from there, I took a bus for about 26 hours. It was uh, through the night. Now the slides have jumped to the very back. Just go back to the one where I'm standing. Yes, there I'm with my Indian clothes on. And this church uh, is the church of where my hostess was in the city of Madurai. And in Madurai, uh, I was sitting in this church listening to the message. The only thing that my hostess translated was, we are reading from John 11. But the whole rest of the thing is like they're speaking in tongues, you know. And I have to guess wh what, what they are preaching about. So I decided, okay, I will just make most of it. I will take John 11 and I will read the whole chapter and I'll see what the Lord wants to say to me. So I was reading. And here I come to this portion of Martha and Mary. And I am seeing these things in scripture that I've never seen before. And I'm in tears because I feel the Lord is speaking to me. So it's my privilege to, uh, to uh, uh, relate to you what I felt. Next slide. What is so important about Martha? What, why am I saying that she was very, very important to Jesus? The first reason, um, maybe if I do this call, means move on, please. Uh, the first reason there is, uh, just go one back because there was, yes, Jesus loved Martha. That's enough. That should be enough for us to want to pursue God, that he loves me. He is not comparing you with Martha, even if he said Martha has, uh, Jesus, uh, Mary has chosen the right thing. Um, one, one on. Uh, in John 11 verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So, ladies and gentlemen, those that are Mannies and Marthas, let's shake off our condemnation, our self-condemnation. And come to the Lord with freedom and with confidence. Because if not, and I am comparing myself with Mary when I come to God, I'm not going to be very effective. Because that condemnation is breaking down my faith. It says those who come to God must come in faith. That is the only thing that can uh, satisfy the Lord is my faith in him. Knowing that even though I'm not perfect, I can come and shake off that condemnation and speak to him my heart. While you're doing the washing, while you're cooking, speak to him. If you, if you can't concentrate on both, speak in tongues. I think we speak too little in tongues. It is a powerful, powerful weapon. So the next slide, it's just a picture. He loves you. 
He loved Martha. So come as you are. Don't wait until you are a Mary. Just come as you are. Next slide. The second reason why Martha was important, she is significant. Why do I say she is significant? Because every time scripture talks about Mary and Martha, they say Martha and Mary. If you mention somebody first in the Jewish culture, that is the most important. Uh, we read, for instance, in the beginning of, uh, of the first missionary uh, trip that Barnabas and Paul went out together. Why? Because Barnabas was the mentor of Paul. He was not important. He was less important. But later, in the second uh, 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 mission trip, it's Paul and Barnabas. Paul, Titus, Paul. So, when somebody is important, then mention first scripture. It's possible she was older. We don't know that. Uh, but I know that she is significant. Next slide. Uh, in John 11 verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister. It's not even Mary, just her sister and Lazarus. Can you see significant to the Lord? John 11 verse 19 again it says, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort their brother. Next slide. The next reason why Martha is important is that with Jesus. That is in John 11 verse 20. You know, we can be so spiritual that we forget to take action sometimes. Mary was sitting in the house, got the message Jesus has arrived, and she sat. She didn't even get up. Jesus. Martha, who was the busy one cleaning the house, doing everything, worrying about everything, she took action and she ran out to the beginning of the town and met Jesus there. So Martha is the one who rushed to meet Jesus. Uh, the next slide says in John 11 verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. No action, you know. Uh, be careful when you think we are very spiritual, but we don't take action. Be very careful. The, the, the advantage that the Martha has, we take action. And G the Lord needs in his kingdom people who can take action. Okay, slides further. She displayed, one more, she displayed, Played faith and hope. I don't read that about Mary. I am certain it had faith and hope. Slide 11, 21 and 26. Martha said to Jesus, Sir, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. This is a little bit of an accusation, isn't it? He, he, she's blaming Jesus. But it's also saying, I know you can do it if only you are here. Um, and I encourage you, if you say, I am a Martha, continue to show your faith. Continue to have hope. We may look at our circumstances and say, I don't know what to do next. You know, it all looks dead like Lazarus. But Martha, no. She said, if you were only there, then my brother would not have died. Next uh, click. Just one. In verse 22, she says, and even now it's not too late, for I know that God will bring my brother back, if only you will ask him. 
What faith? When you see your circumstances dead, when you see your children not serving God, don't look at the Lazarus that is dead. Continue to have hope and say, Lord, if only you will speak the word, I think you can do it. You can bring it back to life. Next uh, verse, verse 23, Jesus told her, your brother will come back to life again. This was a promise uh, of Jesus. But then the next verse, uh, Jesus, uh, Martha said, yes, when everyone else does on Resurrection Day. Yeah. But, but here she is backtracking a bit from her place of faith. Can you see it? She doesn't want to look presumptuous. And she says, yeah, yeah, everybody else will also come back to life on resurrection day. But then Jesus told her in verse 25, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, shall live again. Next uh, click. Uh, in verse 26, he is given eternal life for believing in me and shall never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? Don't because you are a Ma not a Mary, not have faith. Jesus is asking you, do you have faith? Do you believe I can do the impossible? So, next slide. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, says Romans 10. Feed yourself with the word of God. You may say, but you don't understand I'm a mother. Uh, I don't have time. You know what? Put the U, what's it? The U version on your phone and play it while you are cooking. I play scripture for myself. I need to feed myself with the word of God so that my level of faith will up instead of down. We are in very serious times, very serious times even in our country. Things don't look very good. So you must boost your faith, Martha and Manny. You must because life is busy and we don't always have time to read five or ten chapters per day. But you can listen. And do you know that if you listen to the audio Bible, it's only something like 60 or 70 hours through the entire Bible. Uh, so get an app that can help you to listen, listen, listen. So number five, next slide. The fifth reason why Martha was so important, she knew exactly who Christ is and she declared him to be the Messiah. This is profound because there were only two other people who said, you are the Messiah. Who can remember who was one of them? Peter and Jesus said on this statement, on this rock, I will build my church. This is one of the most important things that she said that we believe, that we build our faith upon. Next slide. In John 11:27. Uh, she, she said, yes, Master, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who have so, we have so long awaited. This is also the same as Peter's declaration and Thomas, the unbelieving person. Those, only those three persons in, in the whole of the New Testament made this declaration. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. You the one we have waited for. Martha, Manny, declare who God is in your house. Take action. Take authority. Declare him to be the Messiah of your house, of your children, of your husband, your wife. You know, that he is the master. He is the son of God in your house. Declare it to the heavenlies. Because in Romans 10, uh, Next slide. It says, for salvation that comes from trusting Christ, which is what we preach, is already within easy reach of every one of us. In fact, it's as near as my own heart 
and my mouth. For if you tell others with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord and believe in your own heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Declare who Christ is within your own sphere of influence. If you're working in the school, say it in the school. Declare who Christ is. Don't be so shy that everybody has to guess on what side of the fence you are. Uh, verse 10, for it is by believing in his heart that a man becomes right with God and with his mouth he tells others of his faith, confirming his salvation. For the scriptures tell us that no one who believes in Christ will ever be disappointed. So declare who Christ is uh, in your uh, area, there at work, there at home, in the school, in the college where you are, uh, in the hospital where you are serving, declare who Christ is. Then the last one, uh, the second last one, next one, next slide, is Martha called others to meet with Jesus. Not Mary, Martha. She called uh, Mary and she said secretively, she wasn't a loud mouth, secretively she went to Mary and said, come, Jesus wants to see you. Now, if Martha was jealous of Mary, she would never have gone back to call her. And if Ma Martha didn't call her, Mary would have missed the entire miracle of her brother raising from the dead. Because directly from the entrance of town, when Jesus saw Mary and he saw how they were all crying, he wept, the shortest verse in the Bible, and then he went straight to the grave. Mary would have missed it if it wasn't for Martha. You know? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's speak the gospel. Speak to people. Call them to Jesus, just like Martha did. Call them to himself. Next slide. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master is come and he calls for you. She was not a loud mouth, but secretly she was spreading the news. Come closer to Jesus, she was basically saying. The next slide is talking about what Hebrews 6 verse 12 says in the Living Bible. Then knowing what lies ahead for you won't become bored with being a Christian, nor become spiritually dull and indifferent, but you will be anxious to follow the example of those who receive all that God has promised them because of their strong faith and patience. Next slide. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 3 says, they can see that you are a letter from Christ. They, they read your life written by us. It is not a letter written with pink, a pen and ink, pink, but by the spirit of the living God. In other words, regardless whether you are Martha or Mary, you are a witness. You are either a good witness or a bad witness. But be a witness, be a good witness. Whether we like it or not, continue to be that witness that Jesus would love to have, calling people to himself. Quickly come to Christ. He's waiting for you at the edge of town. Next slide, number seven. This is the last point. Her faith initially failed when it was tested. Now, you will remember in the one of the earlier points, I said she had faith in, in Jesus, but there, as soon as Jesus mentioned the resurrection, she thought, okay, I won't be too presumptuous. I'll just say, okay, you're talking about the resurrection, isn't it? You're not talking about today. And she backtracked a little bit. Don't backtrack. Be, even if I may use the word forward, but your faith is not based on who you are. It is based on the word of God. That's why we have to feed it to ourselves constantly. Feed yourself the word of God so that faith can lift in your heart 
not because you are inferior to those who are Mary, but because you believe the word of God. And now her faith is being tested. Um, I'm reading the next slide, uh, verse 39 and 40. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, she said, by now the smell will be terrible, for he's been dead for, uh, you know, he's been dead for four days. So all of a sudden now, now that there's a test of her faith, she's backtracking again. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't take this stone away. Uh, it's going to smell bad. Yeah, sometimes, you know, there are dead things in our lives and it smells bad. But Jesus is challenging us through Martha's life to press forward and to believe him for the impossible. Next slide. What is faith? It's the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. This is the Living Bible. It says it so nicely. That's why I love reading from it. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it ahead. I can't see it, but I believe it. And I know that if Jesus calls my Lazarus, he will wake up. Next slide. You can never please God without faith, without depending on him. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely look for him. Next slide. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and here is faith. He says, Father, I thank thee that you have heard me. You've already heard me. He's not even prayed yet. He's busy praying. But he is saying, you have heard me. When you pray for your children, for your husband, for your wife, for your job, your employees, pray in faith that he has already heard you. Uh, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people that stand by here, I said it that they may believe that you have sent me. It's a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith. So, let's summarize and go back. Why is Martha so important? Jesus loved her. She is significant. So she was, you know, sent, as uh, she was mentioned more than once, first and only her name, not Mary's name, at one place. Number three, Martha rushed to meet with Jesus. You can meet with Jesus in your busy life. Number four, she had faith and hope. Uh, she believed. She may have backtracked, but she had faith and hope. Number five, she knew Christ and she declared who he was to other people. Number six, she called others to meet him. She went out of her way and pulled others in that she could have been jealous of even. Number seven, her initial faith failed, but when it was tested, later her faith brought wonderful results. Um, I, uh, next slide. Uh, we must ask ourselves, is it easier to serve? Yes, I think it is easy to serve. Uh, the other day somebody said to me, yes, you are a servant, but I'm not a servant. And I'm going, you say, like, you say it almost like you're proud of it, you know. Let's at the very least be a servant. At the very least, if I can't be a Mary, be a servant. Be like Mary. Uh, but, next uh, slide, the summary Please look at this, click one more time. Uh, yes, in which one of these that Martha is, these are truths about Martha, which one would you like to grow in? Is there one that you look there and you say, I should grow more in my faith, or I should call more towards Jesus, or uh, my faith will be tested, but I will persevere. Or do I know that Jesus loves me? Which of those? 
Uh, my notes are on the computer, so you are very welcome to, to ask for it, to be forwarded to you. But let's just return for a moment to one thing is necessary, and that is that we, in our hurry to get many things done, that we do still meet with Jesus. And there are many ways in which I can do it. Uh, sometimes we have to get up from sitting at the feet of Jesus by walking, you know, and praying so that I can remain awake. I do that a lot. I walk and I pray. Uh, come to the Lord. Next slide. Just as you are. Don't say, well, I'll wait until I'm a very good Mary. I'll get 10 out of 10, then I will come to him. No, come just as you are. Next slide, let's pray. Lord, I pray for the precious people that are sitting in front of me. First, I want to thank you for them. I want to thank you for the support that they are giving me, for the times when they are giving, the times when they are praying for me. I am greatly grateful to you and to them. But I bring them also to you today. Lord, we are not Mary's uh, if we are living in our present society here in Riches Bay or in Gauteng like me. Lord, we are not Mary's. We want to be. We want to be a Mary. We want to sit at your feet more and more. But Father, we also know that you loved Martha. You loved her she, had, she was a woman of faith. She was a woman of action. She was a woman that called others towards you. She was a woman that declared who you were. Lord, we want to be like Martha, but also like Mary. Father, we ask for your help. We are living in such serious, serious times. We can see your coming is so close. Help us to be ready. Help us to commune with you so that we can draw from you when storms come. But at the same time, to be a better Martha, we thank you for that. I pray your blessing on this church. I pray your blessing on Pastor John and Jocelyn and their children. I pray your blessing on each member and each visitor in this church. I pray that you continue to bless each one. Lord, meet them at their point of need. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Brenda a hand of appreciation this morning. What a wonderful privilege it is to be part of a diverse church and different gifts and ministries and thank you Brenda for just giving us a small window to some of the things that you do in some of the places I know she would take a long long time if she has to show us a lot more but that's just something uh, of what you do so uh, thank you uh, for your support and as Brenda really says that you can see uh, that it goes to many different ministries and we just want to encourage you to continue with that. And if you're not that involved, then get involved. And uh, in the bulletin this month, I'd encourage you just to refresh ourselves with the article again there that calls for an involvement, uh, that calls us to be uh, part of the body of Christ. I know we are. And so that is a call again. So thank you for a word in season this morning, Brenda. We do appreciate it. Uh, at this time, we're going to, I think before we conclude the song I'm going to ask uh, or conclude with a song I'm going to ask Jocelyn uh, she's got something for you and she's the mother of our assembly as well so I greet all the wonderful mums this morning and I hope that you were all spoiled this morning already and even though it was early that you got up and then your husband and children spoiled you Hope so, and you will enjoy the rest of the day. Amen. <laughs> I just want to wish all the mums in Rocks Church uh, everything of the best for Mother's Day. And we love and appreciate you for being the best mums in the world. And it's time to tell you how wonderful you all are and how special and how fortunate it 
you are, they uh, and your children are, for having such a beautiful mum like you, and a loving and a caring mother. Thank you for being your children's superhero and number one problem solver. Amen. That's what, what we do all day long. And thank you for everything that you do for your family and you do for us also. You are number one in a million and we love you and your children love you also. So give all the mums a round of applause. And then that's not only the mums or the grandmothers, that's also all the mums that teach all the children. Oh my goodness, there's mums here that teach many, many children. And then they have children that are adults and that I want to just uh, bless you all. So we'd like to call up Chantal and uh, Dali, Dalian quickly. And then we're going to give out a couple of gifts. I mean, praise the Lord. Let's stand. Um, I'm going to ask maybe uh, Dees. And Moses, if you could just come help with the offering, I'd appreciate that.